Okay, guys, if you've ever seen the show SpongeBob SquarePants, The Fantastic Four, Family Guy, and Henry Hugglemonster, then you know our guest. She is amazing <laughs> on the mic, on camera, and live on stage. She is fabulous. We are so excited to get buzzed with our amazing, brilliant, beautiful friend, Lori Allen. Yay! Well, let me do a big crowd. Yeah! 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 Thank you for wow. having me. So like cool. One of my sisters are here. These two Mwah. have been friends forever, so they are like sisters. Sister I don't know if that's possible since we're still 27. <laughs> I'll tell you what, crazy. when these cameras are not rolling, you don't have no idea what goes on around these places. But, uh, Chuck, man, are you a little nervous being in the middle? No, I actually like it. Because. See what I mean? Uh, so listen, I want to get right down to yes. it. You have done so much cool stuff. And the cool thing about Lori is that she doesn't sugarcoat stuff. She's going to tell yeah. you exactly how it is. You guys are going to learn a ton. I want to know, they want to know, how did the whole VO thing start out for you? How'd you get started? My parents, good question. My parents are uh, wonderful performers, so I learned everything I know from my folks, for reals. So I grew up in the Maryland, D.C. area, and my folks met at theater school. They met at theater camp. Theater oh. camp, uh, no. wow. They went to American University, and they were uh, theater uh, majors with both radio minors. And so they were um, just extraordinary performers, and still are. And um, they both were, you know, VO, performer, theater people. My dad went off into advertising and singing and directing, and he writes musicals. Advertising and, and singing, like jingles? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, cool. and he's a wonderful, he writes musicals, and he's got a great voice, and my mom has got this amazing voice, and she was doing like booth announcing, and she was always in plays, and she's just, they're just dynamic, wonderful performers. And they all, everyone in my family has this voice. All the women have this voice. And so it was like, good night, Lori. So my mom had, um, <laughs> was always in plays. And so everyone would really come sing yeah. like four part harmony like, like that to us oh, to good night. So, cool. mm. so um, I think if I'd come home and said, I want to be a doctor or an orthodontist, it would have been like, what? Yeah. Um, how can you disgrace <laughs> our family? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah so everyone sound. in my family, yeah. my, my yeah. brother's an amazing brother, musician yeah. and performer. And my sister's a, a DJ, Lisa Manning. She's a, she's a DJ in Nashville. Amazing on-air personality, and my brother Alan Denneberg, he's in New York, and so everybody, everybody has it in our family. So and you, and you and luckily you got it. Yeah, you got it. I hope good. so. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it. you know. You got an extra spring. That's so cool. Yeah. And so, and so, uh, as a performer yourself, when do you remember it being like your big break? I remember. Um, what's the gr the little story? Three blind mice. What is that? The um, the, the little f the fairy tale thing. I was in kindergarten, or I think it was in kindergarten or first grade, and I got to be the mother of whatever that little three blind mice is, and I was taller than the rest of the kids at that age for some reason, because I'm not especially tall or short. Um, and I got to do this thing, and I remember being like, this is really awesome. I guess, I, A, I got to be bossy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got imagine to... Imagine um, that. Imagine that. And then I just, got, I, was, I just got to play. I just got to do what came naturally to me, which is to play, and everybody played in my household. That there's yeah, yeah. so much laughter mm. and craziness and freedom and expressiveness that it felt awkward to not do that. So when I got to do that at school, I was like, I get to do this at school too? Yeah, yeah. So that it felt really natural. So I think it was like in f like third or fourth grade, and then I just knew that that's what I... Wanted to do. I was like, and I was... I, there was not a question. There wasn't, um, you know, anybody telling me, well, that's crazy. It was mm -hmm. always just encouraged and yeah. supported, and yeah. that is such a, a blessing. Like, I don't even think about how amazing that blessing was. That, like, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what was your big your big animation show though? I mean, did, it, did VO start there in animation for you? Um, no, I started off doing um, commercials and stuff as a kid. My dad had us doing um, some for giant department store. He also had us doing a spot for him for. Um, your dad hired you. My dad hired me. My folks. See, you need a dad like hers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. My my parents worked and played well together. They still do, and they had. Um, my dad, it was for Shakey's Pizza, and mm -hmm. he'd written this great jingle, come on down, come on down, come on down to Shakey's for a change, a little change. So me and my sister <laughs> and my cousins, we all went to Shakey's. And so back then, I don't think we all knew that you could have a spit can. Right. And I can't eat wheat and dairy pizza now because I'm gluten intolerant, not because it's L.A., but because I just can't eat that. Right. And, um, because you OD'd on Shakey's. That's exactly. That's right. So it was me and my cousins and my dad had this cool like camera in our face, and we're all like, Bleh, you know. <laughs> so we were doing commercials back then. So I got into more voiceovers in theater. 
through uh, Emerson Theater School and NYU Tisch School of the Arts. And then it seemed like I got actually more into television work, oh, more okay. on camera for like camera theater, first. theater yeah. and television work. Which you're still doing a ton of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In and fact, we saw you on a commercial. What was that, Geico? Oh, the Geico. I'll commercial. believe that when pigs fly. Exactly. Sure, That's a good one. And then, and then it really occurred to me that I was like, what am I? Oh, what am I doing? I did voiceovers as a kid, um, and then I went to, you know, went off to theater school, and then I was like, wait a second. So I was dating a guy, and his mom did demos. And she was like really tutoring me, and I would run off and spur, you know, spray perfume on people. That was my day job for a year. <laughs> I only had a day job for a year. Very grateful. And if they didn't take my perfume, I'd squirt it after them anyway. And um, and then that one thing led to another, and I made a demo, and it took off. And I started to really start off in promos, actually, because mm. I can talk fast and say a lot of things. I guess, and I was the voice of Lifetime. I was the first voice of yes, Lifetime. Yes, I wow. remember that. I didn't only even know that. Yeah, and That's they always wanted really that cool. to me more. Now my voice was like scratched, yeah. and I'm sure I'd be like, <coughs> only on Lifetime. <laughs> no, um, I totally remember Lifetime. Yeah. Yes. So that was really great. So I did a lot of promo, and I just was running around New York. I lived in New York, and just would run from session to session, doing tons and tons of of promo stuff. And then really cosmetic stuff. Like I remember it was like ceramide, time complex capsules, Elizabeth Arden. So it was a lot of commercial and promo. And then I wanted to move out to California to do more um, television on camera and more voice and lots and lots of commercial, lots and lots of promo. And then I was like, what am I doing? I have all this Groundlings improv sketch stuff. I did the Groundlings in New York, mm -hmm. Gotham City East. Um, yay to my instructors, Austin Murphy and Hilary Stern. And I was like, what am I doing? Holy crap! I was like, I gotta do, I gotta do my stuff, and so I took a great class with Charlie Adler and mm -hmm. Chris Zimmerman, like like Lorraine did, yeah, like uh, so many people did, and I took the most amazing class that changed my life, and that is how I got my first animated series, which is SWAT Cats, mm -hmm. and um, I worked with Charlie on that show. And I think you have the cast list for me because yes. I, I, yeah, it's a uh, yes. um, um, Jim Cummings. You were Lieutenant Felina Farrell, Farrell. <laughs> Barry Gordon, Charlie oh gosh, Adler, Penguin, that's right. Gary Charlie. Owens. I was his niece, Gary Owens' mm -hmm. niece. Wow. Tress McNeil, Jim Cummings, Candy Milo, Frederick Dolk, Mark Hamill, and Frank Welker. Get think about down. that for a first Not cast. No wonder I blacked out about someone I got in the room. And it was I back know. in Hanna Barbera days where you'd actually yeah. sit in a circle. Well, and, and that yeah. doesn't even include, you know, you had Rob Paulson and people coming on for multiple episodes. Guess, yeah. yeah. So it was it was amazing. That's it was really a nice welcome, my friend. Heck yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And it was really neat because the class taught me so much and just taught me to actually to to free myself up, but just to to just have fun and to be able to like take a character and get up on my feet and use all of my instincts and not mm -hmm. squelch them or try to do anything that they wanted, whoever they is. It's like no, whatever comes to mind for me to be able to create a character and be a team player. It's like doing radio plays. And so that's what we did. We were all in the same room for the whole day. You didn't just drop in and do your lines. Yeah. You did it as a whole cast. And I miss those days so much. Yeah. Okay, Lori, let's talk about some current projects. Okay. One that I am so excited for you is... <laughs> <laughs>